Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 14 of the processing tutorial. In the last lesson, we completed this game. So we have our balls bouncing around, and we gave it points, and everything looked really good. But all this is kind of poor coding practice, and I've said that a few times before. But in the next few lessons, you're going to learn why. And you're going to learn a much better way of doing all of this stuff in here. And what do I mean by better way? Well, I mean an object-oriented way. So we're actually going to get into kind of the reason behind C++ and the reason behind Java and other object-oriented languages is, well, the reason is, is because this up here, especially creating these arrays, can get really overwhelming at times. And what do, what do I mean by overwhelming? Well, let's say I wanted to make more attributes about these balls. I want to give these balls more character. I want to add a different color for every ball, a different size for every ball, a different stroke width and a different stroke color. Well, if I do that, I'm going to have to create a whole bunch more arrays in order to do, do so. So I'm going to have to create a, a floating point for red and green and blue and size and stroke width and everything like that. Then down here, I'm going to have to initialize them all, and I'm going to have to do some calculations with them down here. So after a while, that just gets very overly complicated and isn't going to work very well. So what if I said that instead of doing all of this stuff, I could just give you a way to create a ball like this. So I could just say ball, ball1 equals make me a ball. Now ball one does all, when I do this, it will make its own random location, its own random speed. And then I could actually use this to draw the ball and update the ball so it bounces off the walls correctly and everything. Pretty much, I can, with this one line, I can get rid of all of this code, all of this code, and all of this code down here. Now doesn't mean it's gone, gone away entirely, it's just not going to be in setup or in draw. But what it does is it makes all the ball information put into one place that only does the ball related things. And that's kind of the heart of object oriented programming is you can make something that gives you the idea of a ball or the idea of a rectangle and then lets you interact with that in a much more concise and an easy manner. Okay. So this is this is kind of the heart of object-oriented programming. We're going to cover this a lot more. I'm going to re be reiterating this again and again and again. So don't worry if you're not really understanding what I'm talking about at this moment. I hope by the end of this lesson, though, that you do get a basic understanding of what an object is. All right, so how are we going to, how are we going to learn this? What are we going to do that's going to be actually interesting? What we're going to do is we're going to look at this game and this game involves these ants which are going to try to eat this man and this man is going to run around and he is going to get life and he is going to try to kill the ants and the game will be over when either he dies or the all the ants have been have been killed so it's a very simple game but it's going to teach us object oriented techniques when we create the ants it's going to teach us object-oriented techniques when we create the man. And it's going to teach us things like how to put graphics on the screen or images on the screen. And it's going to teach us how to use the keyboard. So all these things are, are really important. And it's going to take quite a while to do this because I am going to start very slowly. So as I said, we're going to use object-oriented programming. So let's get to kind of the, the basics of object-oriented programming. I just told you that you can make a ball magically and the ball will take care of itself. So how do we do that? Well, looking at this, this is kind of the, the whole idea of object-oriented programming in a nutshell. We use classes to make objects. So what's a class? Well, a class is a blueprint in the same way a blueprint is a blueprint for a house. So a blueprint can make a house, but the blueprint doesn't really isn't store information about the actual house like this blueprint won't tell us what color the carpet is or what color the house is or uh, 
any of the like things like is it have wood flooring or, or non wood flooring things like that so the individual things about the house are unique to that house and we can use this blueprint to maybe make 20 or 30 or a thousand houses and then change each thing a little thing about the houses inside but structurally all the houses are exactly the same meaning the structure the way the house looks in the, the framework the windows are all in the same place, the garage is in the same place, it's all the same size. It's just the attributes about the house have changed somewhat. And that's the important thing about, about classes and objects. Classes work just like a blueprint. They tell us the structure of an object, or in our case, maybe the structure of an ant or the structure of a ball. But it doesn't tell us the individual attributes about the object it's creating. The class says, you are going to have a location, you are going to have a speed, you are going to have a specific color, but only when we've created the object do we actually assign those attributes. So imagine back to our ball game again. I make three balls. Each ball starts in a random location, and each ball has a different color. So I have three ball objects, and each ball is slightly different. The class doesn't know anything because the class is just the blueprint. It creates them. It's used to create them. But those objects each have their own attributes. All right. And so that's kind of a general overview. Just remember, classes make objects. Objects store attributes. And the attributes have a special word for them. They're called members. All right. And we're going to get to that right now. So we're, we're going to make a new sketch. I'm calling this one Sketch 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the size equal to 600 and 600. And let's go ahead and do frame rate of 60. All right. That's all you need to do for setup at the moment. So nothing special at all. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a new file. This is something we haven't done before because we're going to we're going to put all of our ant information in that file. So you can either click this button here or you can click here and go new tab. And when you do that, you get this down here. So we want to give it a descriptive name. And by descriptive name, I mean describe the type of object we're going to make. This is also going to be exactly the same name as our class. So I'm making an ant. So I want to make an ant class. So this is going to be the file where I store all the information about how the ants might look. This is the blueprint for the ant. And to make a class is very simple. You just do class ant, just like that. All right, so I'm done. I've made a class. And I can actually use this class. And it won't do anything, but I can use it. And remember in the last one when I said I could do ball, ball one? Well, now I can actually do ant, ant one. And this program will run no problem, no errors. Well, I said ant ant one. That's really weird, right? What does this look like here? Well, this looks like declaring a variable. And that's exactly what it is. Ant one is a variable. And ant is a data type. So just in the same way I could do int uh, int one or float float one, I can now do ant ant one. But I haven't given any information in here to tell ant1 what it can do. Now there's a very there's a big difference between these and this. So this is a class that creates an object. I don't know why I put a semicolon there. And these are primitive values. Okay, so a class or objects and primitives are very different. Primitives are things that just store values or a character or a byte or some type of information that is very easily stored in memory or that a CPU can process. And it has no ability to do anything special. Remember I said I'm going to make a ball and that ball is going to be able to draw itself and do things like that. In the same way, our ant, when we're done with it, the ant is going to be able to draw itself to the screen. It's going to be able to control its own movement. It's going to be able to know if it's dead or not. And it's going to be very easy 
for the this to, to create more ant objects from it and all those ants are going to be autonomous they're going to be able to control themselves and move around while in this case these floating in, in ants they just store numbers and they don't really have any special abilities to do anything an int can't control its own incrementing you have to tell the int the the integer to be incremented a floating point number can't round itself down to the nearest integer you have to do that yourself but you can create in an object that would do all of those things you could create an object that every time you call a function it updates itself and then rounds itself maybe rounding itself down to the nearest whole number and multiplying by three dividing by eight whatever you want it to do it could do a whole bunch of very complex actions all right so how does it do that well we're not going to put anything in here at the moment as far as code but i'm just going to tell you the three parts that every class has the first part is the members and these are just the variables of the class all right, and the second thing is going to be our constructor. And the constructor initializes the variables or the settings, we'll say, of the, of the class. We'll say of the object that the class creates. That's a more, a more correct term. So variables of the object the class creates so up here these are members and these are declared just like you normally would maybe int a and things like that okay and they're just regular variables you can put anything in here you want you can put floats or integers or strings and we haven't talked about strings in the quite yet but we will very soon you could even put other classes in here as part of members other objects rather and then the constructor will take all those and initialize all of them for us. And we don't have to initialize them, but we can. The constructor can also do other things. So for example, the member up here might give the ants location, while the constructor gives the, the ant a random location on the screen. All right. And the last thing we have is methods. And this is a, a word that I have used a few times, but I've always said function instead. So I say, these are the functions that are in a class. We'll say, I'm gonna say the functions of the object that the class creates. So let's break these down. This is really the attributes this is the color of the rug in the house or the color of the, the exterior or if there's a wood floor or not a wood floor or if there's a brand new refrigerator in there or not. The constructor is the one that sets up those attributes. And the methods are the abilities of the object. So this is a very important thing. In the case of the house, it could be that the abilities might be things like uh, can sound an alarm if somebody opens a window because you've installed a, a theft deterrent system. It, with the balls, it's a little bit easier to understand. It might be something like to draw a ball or to remove the ball off the screen or to uh, maybe change the ball color or things like that. With the ants, it might be something like draw the ant, move the ant, have the ant attack the man, or something like that. So the methods would be all the abilities that the, the object created by the class would have. The constructor sets up all the attributes, and the attributes are just simple variables. So we create a bunch of variables, we set up the variables, and then we use the methods to change those variables around based on the actions of the object created by this. So that's kind of what a class is in a nutshell. And we're going to add code in here next time. But I just want you to get this overview. And I want you to understand that classes create objects. And whenever we create a class, we're creating a new data type. And a data type, remember, so far we've only learned about int and float. Well, now we're adding in objects. 
and objects are are our own data types and that's that comes down to the, that's the power of object oriented programming is we create now our own data types and we can then use these data types to do anything we want so we can make any type of data type and that's why people really like object oriented programming and that's why so many people move to it from procedural programming like C and things like that in the past is because of the power that it gave you. And that power comes through something called abstraction, the ability to kind of look at things in a more higher level way. So when we create an ant object, we're not trying to look now at all the little details of the ant and micromanage them. We've created the ant once, we've tested that it works, and now I can just use the ant or the ball or anything like that as an individual entity. All right. I will add some more supplementary material for understanding this stuff on the website. And in the next lesson, I will review and then we'll start trying to give our ant some abilities and, and, and attributes. And along the way, of course, we're going to learn how to put images and things in there as well. Okay, so thanks for watching and I will see you next lesson.